Well, let's go ahead and light the candle. In three, two. Good afternoon. As chair, I now call to order the February 6, 2023 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Policy Review Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Teams Live on the BCPS website. To conduct this meeting by virtual means, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say, will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Walsh, Ms. Pitts, or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Pl Ms. Pitts, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you. Dr. Hager? Present. Thank you. Ms. Harvey? Present. Thank you. Ms. Hassan? Present. Dr. Savoy? Ms. Pumphrey? Present. Right, with four present, we have a quorum. Thank you. Ms. Pitts, please call the roll to determine the to determine which staff members are present in this meeting. Dr. Boswell McComas. Present, thank you. Ms. Ferguson. Present. Thank you. Mr. McCall. All right, Dr. Grimm. Dr. Grimm, I believe you're here just on mute. All right, Mr. Connolly. Ms. Howie. Here. Thank you. Ms. Wash. Here. Thank you. Ms. Pumphrey, the meeting is now yours. Thank you. Ms. Howie, please proceed. Good afternoon, members of the committee. I'm here to do something I rarely do, which is to present good news. I have placed in the uh, in board docs an update to the board's corrective action plan and just wanted the committee to be aware of the fact that as per your corrective action plan, to the Office of the Inspector General that all of the policies that were part of that correction, corrective action plan have now been presented to the board and approved by the board. Thank you. Are there any questions? We will now proceed to new business. Regarding policy 3170, Mr. Connolly, please proceed. <clears throat> Thank you and good afternoon. So policy 3170 is currently titled Performance Management System for Continuous Improvement. We are recommending just a name change and that change in title to Framework for Continuous Improvement, removing the Performance Management System. Um, the purpose behind all that is that a performance management system often has multiple meanings within BCPS as well as school systems across the nation. For example, we have a performance management office in HR and we have a performance management office in the Department of Research Accountability and Assessment. Both are the same names, both have very different functions. So a framework for continuous improvement explicitly identifies the purpose and implementation process for policy and rule 3170. Specifically, policy 3170 focuses on the organization of a continuous improvement process for the school system, establishing systemic goals, defining standards of academic and operational excellence, aligned to goals and monitoring and reporting system-wide progress and meeting those goals to the BCPS Board of Education. The corresponding rule 3170 explicitly identifies a framework process and expectation for establishing, monitoring and reporting systemic continuous improvement. So our request for approval is to have the name change to framework for continuous improvement. Thank you, Mr. Conley. 
Is there any you. discussion? Is there any discussion on the recommended name change to policy 3170? I will call each committee member for this purpose. Dr. Hager. I'm sorry, yes, sorry. If, we, if, if you asked if we had a question or you wanted us to, to vote to approve it. A question, any questions? No, no questions. OK, Ms. Harvey. Uh, no questions, thank you. Ms. Hassan. I have no questions, thank you. Dr. Savoy. There are no corrections. Policy 3170 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Is there a motion to accept staff's, staff's recommend, recommended changes and recommend that policy 3170 proceed to first reader? So moved, Hager. Seconded, Harvey. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Connolly, don't leave yet. There still has to be a vote. Sure, no problem at all. Thank you. Sorry, I lost my spot. I apologize. I can do the roll call vote, Ms. Pumphrey, if you like. Sure, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Dr. Savoy? And Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. All right, we have four in favor. The affirmative has it, and the motion is adopted. Policy 3170 will be moved forward to the board for first reader. Ms. Pumphrey, may yes, um, Mr. Connolly be excused, please, as his policy is has been completed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Okay, moving forward to policy 3128. Dr. Grimm, please proceed. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, policy 3128. Uh, establishes the board's procedures and operating guidelines for the assignment and use of board owned vehicles. Um, there are just a, a few minor uh, uh, word changes to this particular policy um, as noted in the in the document that was posted online. That's it. OK, is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 3128? If there are no corrections and no objection, policy 3128 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Is there a motion to accept staff's recommend recommended changes and recommend that policy 3128 proceed to first reader? So moved, Harvey. I can Second, Hager. The question is on the adoption of the motion to recommend that policy 3128 be moved to first reader as presented. All in favor of recommending that policy 3128 proceed to first reader, please answer yes when your name is called. All opposed, please answer no. If you're in Ms. Pitts, please call the roll. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. We have all five in favor. The affirmative has it and the motion is adopted. Policy 3128 will be moved forward to the board for first reader. Ms. Pumphrey, may Dr. Grimm be excused as this policy has been completed? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Grimm. Thank you. Moving forward to policy 4005, uh, Mr. M Mr. McCall, please proceed. Good afternoon. Policy 4005 supports the board's mission for students to have the benefit of instructional or education services beyond the regular school day, while ensuring board employees do not benefit from business with the school system and from relationships with students. 
There were uh, proposed changes. One included a reference to the Board of Education Policy 8364, paragraph one, to iterate the importance of the potential for a conflict of interest. And also replaced he or she with they in paragraph one to conform with the policy review handbook guidance recommending use of gender inclusive language. Is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 4005? If there are no corrections and no objection, policy 4005 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Is there a motion to accept staff's recommended changes as recommended that policy 4005 proceed to first reader? So excuse me, Ms. Pumphrey, if there's no objection, then um, that's essentially unanimous consent okay. of the committee. You do not need to process um, a motion. OK, thank you. And may Mr. McCall be excused at this time, ma'am? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCall. Thank you. Have a good evening. OK, moving forward to policy 5230. Dr. Ferguson, please proceed. Good afternoon. Policy 5230 um, student records is being presented to the board um, because it's scheduled for review this school year. Um, policy 5230 outlines the board's responsibility to recognize the rights of parents to review and inspect their child's student records and to maintain student records in accordance with federal, state, and law regulations. Uh, staff is recommending that policy 5230 be revised to conform with policy review committee at committee's editing conventions. And that is the only change that has been made. OK, thank you. Is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 5230? Ms. Hager. Um, Dr. I Hager, just wanna, sorry. No, that's fine. Um, I, uh, there was a discussion a few board meetings ago about um, record retention and the impact it was having. We, we uh, the discussion was related to a um, contract for a new warehouse to store records. Is this the policy that um, led to the extensive retention of records such that we have to keep them for a really long time? Um, because I know there was talk about revisiting it. Sorry. So if you don't mind, uh, Dr. Ferguson, um, I'll, I'm happy to field that question. So Dr. Hager, no, um, this policy is not related to the records ban, the records disposition ban, which was put in place by the board. It was not a matter of policy. It was voted on by the board uh, in 2018, I believe. I could be mistaken about that. Uh, however, um, the, the policy, this particular student records policy has nothing to do with the ban on uh, disposition of records. The ban on disposition of records, as I indicated, was put in place separately by the board. Your uh, records retention policy, which is 2380, and is also referenced in 5230 in the um, related policies and rules, is your system-wide policy on records information management. Additionally, with respect to student records, there, uh, there is, there actually for all of the records of the school system, there are records retention schedules. All of those schedules have been approved by the Maryland State Archivist, and under the current ban, student records were not covered. So student records would be able to be disposed of and have been uh, disposed of over the past several years, consistent not with this policy, but with the records retention schedule, which I believe is C1458. I could be wrong about that, uh, but that is all of the records retention schedules are posted on the website under records information management. That's really helpful. Um, and just so, so we wouldn't be able to um, help alleviate that with this making any changes to this policy. No, the board would have to lift the ban, which specifically applies to uh, the superintendent's office, the board office, uh, the division of uh, human resources, I believe, 
uh, the Division of Business Services. It's where you collect the most paper that the board has prohibited for the past several years any disposition of any records, uh, notwithstanding the records retention schedules that have been approved by the state archivist. And yes, um, it is, there's a severe need in your offices at this point, and I'm sure staff has expressed that before. Definitely. Right, thank you. I appreciate your, your discussion. Any additional discussion or questions? If there are no corrections and no objection, policy 5230 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Is there a motion to accept staff's recommended changes as recommended? The policy 5230 proceed to first reader. Okay, without objection, policy 5230 will move forward. We'll proceed to first reader. Thank you, um, Madam Chair, and may Dr. Ferguson and Dr. Boswell McComas be excused at this time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, colleagues. Moving on to policy 8315, participation by the public. Committee members, as you will note, our meeting is scheduled to end at 6.15 instead of 6. As chair, I thought that the, excuse me, as chair, I thought that the additional time was necessary in order to address this matter. Ms. Howie, could you please provide background? Surely. Good evening again, members, or good afternoon, members of the committee. Um, just wanted to first go over the documents that are under subsection D in, uh, in board docs so you know what you have. Uh, the first item is the current policy. 8315, participation by the public. The second item is a list of your current stakeholder groups. Third, the circuit court opinion uh, concerning the, um, the challenge to policy 8315 uh, by the Baltimore County Parent and Student Coalition. Then you have the state board order that was issued in July a subsequent state board order that was issued in September. Um, Ms. Pumphrey and Ms. Harvey asked that uh, a survey be conducted of other local school systems and local boards of education about their practices concerning uh, public uh, participation. And that is found in attachment six. In attachment seven, you have specifically the state board's governance and operations manual. Its public participation guidelines are on page 21 of that document. And then um, you have the specific of, um, procedures of some of your sister jurisdictions um, in this state. I also took the liberty of following up with some of my colleagues um, out of state to get some context to see whether or not Maryland was unusual. And I'll go into that when I'm talking about um, what staff's recommendation is. So first of all, in terms of the history, in February of 2021, the Baltimore County Parent and Student Coalition uh, petitioned the board chair to be named under, actually it was their initial request was under policy 1200, a stakeholder so that they could be recognized during your board meetings as a stakeholder and speak regardless of whether or not uh, they were a member of the public. Um, that request was denied. Then there was a demand subsequently in February, February 22nd specifically, for immediate recognition. Uh, there were, uh, and that was from their attorney, there were, there was correspondence that went back and forth until finally on March 9th, there was a motion by one of your board members to immediately change policy 8315 and recognize um, the Baltimore County Parent and Student Coalition that evening. Um, what happened um, eventually at that meeting was that a motion passed and the specific motion was that the PRC revisit policy 8315 and therefore policy 8315 was placed on the schedule. Um, obviously, the coalition was not granted status, uh, and because of that, they appealed to the Maryland State Board of Education, and that is, uh, those are the, the orders that you have uh, in your packet in board docs. 
In um, 2021, July 27th, the State Board issued order number 2106, indicating that the, the State Board lacked jurisdiction to, in, to name the coalition a stakeholder, and they left the board's decision or the, the board chair's decision undisturbed. The uh, coalition then sought reconsideration from the State Board. The State Board um, issued again an order denying the request now based on the or then based on the fact that there had been an appeal to the Circuit Court for Baltimore County. Uh, review was sought, as I indicated, in the Circuit Court for Baltimore County. And on August 25th, 2022, the Circuit Court upheld the State Board's decision, therefore left undisturbed the decision not to designate uh, the coalition as um, a stakeholder group. So the current question before uh, the committee for your discussion is what exactly the committee wishes, what direction you wish to give to staff about amending policy 8315. As I indicated, uh, Ms. Pumphrey asked that there be a survey done of other LEAs in the state. You have that summary uh, in your materials. And as you see in your materials, uh, no other LEA specifically designates or defines the term stakeholder. The closest you'll find is Montgomery County. And in Montgomery County, there are five spaces that are reserved for community groups, three of which are their collective bargaining units if they show up, but the, um, the spaces could be filled by any group that shows up. Um, that is, as I said, the closest. Uh, and when I, I cast the net a little bit farther, I got answers from New Jersey, North Carolina, Alabama, uh, Indiana, Louisiana, and North Carolina, Virginia. None of those states or none of the LEAs in those states um, has anything similar to stakeholders. Most of them do what most of your sister jurisdictions do, which is simply to um, either give five minutes to um, a group when they indicate they're with a group or more time to a group, or simply to let a certain number of um, slots uh, be designated for a public comment. But based on the research and on the fact that you have at least one other group that is asking for stakeholder status, it is staff's recommendation that the stakeholder status or stakeholder, that definition, that term uh, be removed from policy 8315 and that the, the board consider, the PRC consider simply having a number of designated spaces as opposed to uh, naming any one group or any several groups, stakeholders without any further definition. So I'm available to answer questions as you discuss this issue. Okay, the floor is now open to members of the committee so that we may give direction to staff on how to revise policy 8315. Dr. Hager? Um, that was really helpful and I was looking to see the definition of stakeholder. I couldn't find it, so I really appreciate that it, it's just not there, which I think is really interesting. Um, and just another bit of maybe data we could pull up um, for when, when the policy is revised would be um, how at the past, you know, years worth of board meetings or even pre-pandemic, however you'd like to do it, how many of our stakeholder groups have actually shown up? Like, have we exceeded 10 ever in the last, you know, 10 years? I don't know how, I, I don't want to burden the staff if it's a lot of work, but, you know, if we could figure that out, that might also help us wrap our heads around, like, what that limit number is of groups, just so that we can maximize um, their attendance while also ensuring that we hear from a diverse group of stakeholders. Okay, Ms. Harvey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Howie, I just wanted to be clear. The recommendation is to remove stakeholders and to add additional slots that can be used by stakeholder groups to the public comment or just blend them into the slots we already have. So, um, and let me answer your question with not answering, by not answering your question, Ms. Harvey, my <laughs> favorite thing to do. So, um, you, you currently in this policy do not state that you're going to, um, you're going to have 10 slots for the public. Doesn't state that in 8315. Simply states that there are, um, there are slots that are, there are individuals who are granted stakeholder status. 
So it is staff's recommendation that you take out any reference to stakeholder and simply include in your public comment policy that you will be um, uh, that you will be designating a certain number of spaces for public comment, which could include stakeholders. Again, if you'd like to give more time to individuals who say they're representing a group, then that is certainly something that um, other LEAs have done. Some LEAs have simply granted a certain amount of time and then divided it by however many people who are there. Uh, so you do have those options without um, giving a designation that could cause consternation. And I do not want to um, the, the, the committee to think that litigation is something that should prevent you from, um, from enacting policy. But I don't want you to be unaware of the fact that the, this designation did cause um, litigation and without um, and again as I said there's at least one other group that is asked informally hey we think we'd like to be stakeholders uh, it, it's you're simply going to have more groups or different groups ask uh, for this designation when in fact as Dr. Hager noted it's not defined in your policy there is a list however but there is not a specific designation or specific de definition and there's not one that uh, that we could find in this state or as I said when I cast a net a little bit wider um, in other states. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I also have a question. Um, so if we were to as you mentioned simply state that there are a certain number of spots slots for organizations um, organizations would be a broader term, so we wouldn't be defining stakeholders. Um, and is there any thought as far as, say, for instance, the number of slots we determined was five or four or three? Um, is there any thought as far as how we designate if more than three show up, how we designate which get to take those spots, um, slots for organizations? So, as I said, no, that was not something that the um, that staff has discussed. Um, but what you do have in terms of exemplars is the Montgomery County. That's the closest uh, we could find in the state where they designate five spots for organizations. But three of those five stop stop spots are given to um, their collective bargaining units. But if one of those three doesn't show up, then any other organization can take those, those spots. So I, I think that um, with the research that Dr. Hager wants us to conduct about who actually shows up and who has been showing up, uh, we can certainly start some of that work that may inform how many is, uh, is why or would be wise to have. You should also be aware that um, sometimes this ebbs and flows. So if there are particular issues that are affecting particular groups, they'll show up. But as to constant showing up, I don't know um, other than uh, your teachers association, whether or not there are ones that you can count on for every single meeting. OK, thank you. And Ms. Hassan, you had a question? Yes, I did. Thank you. And it's it's adding on to yours, Ms. Pumphrey. Um, so if we were to amend this policy just so that it would, you know, almost remove the word stakeholders completely and just modify that language. Um, when we like when individuals reg register to speak for public comment or participation or any of that nature, would they just not indicate that they were a part of a stakeholder group or if they would, it would be like a different term or like I'm just thinking at least from like the student perspective, like if students come and speak and you know they're already a part of that stakeholder group or someone from a student council comes and speaks, um, are we still providing them that spot and do they have access to that? Is that something that we can like, you know, guarantee that we at least have a couple of slots available if they are to be filled and if not, they just go to someone else as a part of an organization. Um, I just I don't know, I was just Wondering if I could get a little bit of clarity on that one. So I, I do apologize, Mrs. Hahn, but um, you were broken up, at least on my end. I'm not sure if everyone else heard your complete comments, but I did not hear the beginning of your comments. So um, if, if I understood correctly, you were asking whether or not 
we would still have, or at least what I did here, was whether or not you would still have uh, some sort of group recognition. So if an individual is there for a group, uh, again, that's, that's what staff is seeking your guidance about, uh, but our recommendation is that they not be called stakeholders. Okay. that you not have that specific designation. So uh, it could be, and uh, I believe it's Culvert County has uh, recognition. If you're there and you say, I'm representing a group, then you're there on behalf of that group and you might get um, uh, an another minute, for example, or if what the uh, the board desires, again, you know, the closest corollary is, is uh, Montgomery County that you have OK, here are we have X number of slots for groups, but we're not going to say that they have to be one of these. I think you have 16 or 17 groups that are designated now as stakeholders. It would simply be for an individual who comes and says that he or she is representing a group. OK, okay. but well, again, good. it's yeah. it's also um, you guys or the committee's imagination. What is it that you believe? Uh, serves your community, uh, but as I said, staff does not believe that um, that stakeholder group, that that term um, serves the community any longer as well as it has in the past. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, thank you, Ms. Howie. Um, the floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. Yes. Ms. Pumphrey, uh, if you wouldn't mind, what is it that uh, the committee would like staff to work on as far as oh, a draft under review? No worries. I apologize. I thought we sort of cleared that, but I guess it wasn't. <laughs> um, so we, if I'm hearing correctly, it sounds as if we want to, um, if we want to research the Montgomery County policy as far as the number of slots for organizations and sort of um, have so that the the policy no longer specifically states stakeholders but organizations. Anybody anyone else does that sound correct? Accurate? Yes, I just think we're Dr. Hager was trying to see what the average participation was for our stakeholder groups so that we could make a determination on how many slots we may want to designate if we choose that option. Yes, thank you for clarifying. That's what I meant to say, Ms. Harvey. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you, members of the committee. Thank you. OK, the floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. I must emphasize that this is not the time to conduct business and there has not been noted as there has not been notice provided as required by the Open Meetings Act. The floor is open for anyone if you have any concerns. So I, I think my just concern and we're getting more information on that is how we operationalize. Um, the 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 way that speakers are selected and uh, the number of speakers. I think we all agree that we want to encourage as broad a perspective as we can and be as inclusive as we can. Um, so I I think that would be uh, my concern or my interest. I don't know that it's a concern. I agree. I think we have those designated stakeholder spots. And again, we're moving back to the prior policy we discussed, but we have those designated designated stakeholder spots and um, often there aren't anyone speaking in those slots or um, I just think by leaving it, leaving it, leaving the language broad, uh, we're being more inclusive. We do want to hear from as from the public as much as possible. Um, and I think this actually will allow for more of that instead of less. Um, in my opinion. No one has anything else. 
um, announcements. The next meeting of the policy Re review committee is scheduled for Monday, March 20th, 2023 at 430 p.m. Uh, because there is no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, committee members. Have a good evening, everyone.